So in today's video, I want to discuss some some crucial mistakes to avoid when you're negotiating. But not only that, not only am I going to use real life examples, am I going to really break down my insight and, and share some knowledge with you guys? I want you guys to at least have this be a good starting point because you know my information isn't the be all end all of everything. Get this, get an idea of what mistakes to avoid and have it be a starting point to your educational journey. Let's talk about a little thing I like to call leverage. In its most simplest form, according to the dictionary, leverage can be used as a verb to use something that you already have in order to achieve something new or better. When it comes to real estate property, we have to acknowledge first and foremost, what is the leverage position that we're currently in? Let's say we have a house. It just got listed two days on the market. So it's listed on Thursday, it's currently Saturday. Within the first weekend, they've scheduled about 12 showings on the property and your agent called the listing agent or the seller and said, Hey, how many, do you have any offers? They said, yeah, we actually have three offers to our list price. Uh, one is a little bit over. If we draw a T chart, what's the something seller has versus what's the something the buyer has in order to achieve something new, where are the scales balancing right now? Well, the seller has a lot of interest. The seller has already offers on the table. In the seller's case, the something they have to achieve something new, which is essentially selling their house, is they have a lot of interest that they can leverage to get more money from the people already offering, but more importantly, get more money from new offers that are coming in. So if you are a buyer in this situation and you have all of these details and you say, you know what? I think I'm gonna lowball them. I think I'm gonna offer them $40,000 under list price. It's your prerogative. One thing you have to know as a home buyer is you are the boss. You're the one in charge. Your agent works for you. Your lender works for you. But if you're not considering all the facts in question, then that's your decision to make. You make an offer 40K below in this situation and they reject you and you get really pissed and you throw a fit about it. Then there's a little bit of disconnection from reality here. Okay. So instead what we do is we have to look at it like this. There is a goal you have in mind and we have to identify what that goal is. So for you, it might be a certain price of a house. Hopefully it's not that though. Hopefully it's more a monthly payment. Maybe you need concessions. Maybe you want a uh, peace of mind. So you want uh, like a house that's in pretty good shape. You want to find something that's decent. So in order to really know and get the best deal for, for you, essentially, we have to A, be able to identify leverage situations, which we'll do some more examples right now. B, we have to be very in tune with our goals. So be in tune. I play classical guitar right now. Uh, so sorry for the musical analogies, but if you really think about it, it's like the leverage is the key and the goals is if you're in tune with that key or not. I don't know if you guys have ever heard music of like when, when there's like a band playing in the key of A or something, and then you try to solo with it in the key of G. Okay. So let's say your goals are to be, let's say, uh, is to be at 350 and get at least uh, 10,000 of concessions. Well, let's say you find a house that's currently priced at 370. Now you might think, whoa, this house won't work for me, but let's assume it has 90 days on the market. Not only that, but we did a little digging in and the tax records. They bought the house four years ago. Sorry for the bad comma there. So they have about $150,000 of, uh, with at least before commissions and everything of equity there. So there is money to be made with them, even if we don't get them the price they want, right? This is a no brainer, lowball them. Well, not necessarily. The second biggest mistake you can make really, I guess not you, but your agent can make, um, is not having conversations. Like we are in the modern age. We prefer to text and email. I'm sometimes guilty of that too, but we have to have conversations with people when it comes to this, you're not going to pick up on little cues or anything. If you're just messaging them now, technically you're not going to ever talk to the listing agent or you're not going to talk to the seller. The reason why is the way real estate works is there's you and you're represented by an agent and then there's a seller and they're represented by the agent. And the problem with that is there's so many filters that the meaning, the tone, a, a bunch of things can be diverted and changed and everything until it gets to you or likely to the seller. So we, we have to remove as much potential of, of, of this 
twisting of the message as possible. So if you send a text message, just blankly saying that price doesn't work for me, your agent can then get that message. And hopefully we're assuming you have an amazing agent that will fight for you, right? We'll call contact the other agent and say that price won't work for us. And the agent is going to tell the seller they don't want the house anymore. And you're like, oh, you're like, and the problem with this is you'll never know the, the seller, which is a fine. We're not selling the house to them anymore. It tells their agent. And then your agent says, okay, they're not buying the house anymore. And then your agent calls you, Hey, they don't want to sell the house to us anymore. This could be avoided if you are always keeping your agent in check and you're making sure these are having their conversations being had. This is awkward because you have to tell your agent how to do their job, but they're getting paid very well. There is, there has to be conversations, every single thing piece of negotiation, every single exchange of information, unless it's like an update or something has to have a phone to phone call conversation. And you need to make sure to keep your agent liable of this. Like when they tell you some information, you know, was this a phone call or was this a message? Oh, it was just a message. Okay. Do you mind calling them and just kind of feeling out the situation better more and see what's going on? So now in this previous example, we were using where it looks like this is a perfect situation where your agent could call. And it turns out, even though they've been 90, day, 90 days on the market, they just got an offer at list price with no closing cost. So here's the thing. Do we believe them or not? There could be a buyer dumb enough out there or maybe not buyer, but the agent didn't do any research and just like the buyer really wants the house. The buyer uh, called and, you know, they were out of town for 90 days and they came back and this is the one. Right. And they want to offer list price. They just want to get it. Either way, you would have never known this if there wasn't that phone conversation had with agent to agent. You would have never known this if you just tell your agent, hey, agent, make an offer, uh, 340, send it over there. Let's see what they say. And your agent doesn't bother calling and they just send over the offer. You have to make sure your agent's having conversations or had a recent situation where um, we were the buyers and we made an offer on the property. And I think the, the, the agent somehow leaked it or I don't know how I found out, but they told us that they they were like we really need this to work out we are we have to make sure we work this out because we're buying another house in wherever whoever what's where upon finding that out we got a lot of things our way go in that transaction one of the best books i've ever read was um never split the difference but one of the things he said in that book is once you give away leverage or you give away a quote unquote well he calls it black swan you're, it's now a hostage. You're, you become a hostage to the situation. If the other side knows or has or discovers they have an overwhelming amount of uh, leverage over you, you're now at their mercy. You are now their hostage. What I had to tell my buyers is like, it's not our responsibility what's going on with the seller. Like it's not our respons responsibility that they did everything so tightly and they mismanaged and they didn't give enough space between their home sale and their home purchase to make sure they like, they're the ones that did this really willy nilly. We're not responsible for that. So if something's not going to happen the way we want it to, we, okay, then we'll cancel. No worries. We'll just go find another house. And of course it'd be like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. <laughs> That's the thing it, it, you, identifying that situation and having these conversations is the only way you're going to find out these little, these little cues where you, you just understand the leverage you have over somebody. Now here's your third one. And this one's a little controversial, but it wouldn't be a Javier Vidanya video if it wasn't controversial, um, is you have to understand one concept when you're buying a house. I'll draw the, the, the diagram again. So there's the buyer's agent. And I'm saying you, cause I'm assuming you're a home buyer watching this, but I guess if you're a home seller too, it's uh, ac applicable. If you were to ask anybody where the negotiation is happening, where the negotiation takes place, most of the times they'll say there, right? Between the buyer and the seller's agent. Um, the buyer is the hero representing the buyer. The seller's agent is the hero representing the seller. And they're having this mega clash, but Here's the reality of the situation. In a real estate transaction, there's more than one negotiation happening. That's happening right here. That's happening right here. If I have an, a buyer telling me this is the only thing I can do, and that's it. And I'm like, okay, but are you sure there's nowhere else we can come up with anything? Like this is absolutely the buyer's like, nah, this is it. I don't have anything else. If I don't get this, like this is it. Now, is that the truth? I don't know. You're only giving me the information that's there. There's multiple layers and there's multiple negotiations happening. So whatever your goal is, 
don't expect your buyer's agent to follow it to the T. You have to remind your buyer's agent, these are my goals, this is what I have to do, this is it. Now, odds are, could you call your Uncle Pete and be like, Uncle Pete, can I borrow 5K? Maybe, that's an option. But is that an option you'll tell your agent? Maybe not. Maybe you don't tell your agent about your Uncle Pete because if your agent knows about Uncle Pete, then when they negotiate, they can always have that mental, you know, go back in their head. Uh, they're gonna call their Uncle Pete anyways. If they have to come up with $3,000, uh, they'll just have to call Uncle Pete, right? So be aware, the mistake is to not be aware of this. The third mistake, of course, is there's multiple negotiations happening. Yes, don't be an adversary to your agent, but be aware you're supplying them with the tools they need to get the job done. Don't give them little things and little little extra tools that they could potentially use against you. Now, if you have absolute trust in your agent, then that, you can take that risk, but I'm just here to make a video, okay? The last mistake you need to absolutely avoid. You might get a paragraph, two paragraphs, a few sentences. The boom, 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 bunch of crap. And in all that crap, there's this and there's all this. The problem when it comes to negotiating back and forth, you know, trying to get a deal, whatever, is there's this that lets you influence you. This could be a sob story. This could be, oh my gosh, this is it. Like if I don't get this sold, I'm, I'm screwed. And you know, I don't blame people for doing it. It's it's what they're used to. It's a human condition, right? They The first negotiations we have is with our parents. And a lot of people learn the behavior of, you know, soft stories or using very emotional things that try to get their way. But at the end of the day, there's only one thing that matters. And that's that red line. Let me share a message I got from a really large company who was negotiating a very aggressive inspection thing. So there it is right here. Let me um, remove, let me make myself super tiny. I know I'm gonna be, it seems super weird, but let's just uh, go with it. Buyers are already getting over 8,000 in seller's concession and them, they, this is, they're talking about themselves, or it, will, it may or may not have been a corporation, is losing almost 140,000 on this home. And we're already selling it under list as well. There is much more to provide here as we're trying to give the best deals possible as we have owned this home for a while now i can come up with 2k um but more than that it just isn't justified how given the rest of the deal so just long story short we were already receiving eight thousand dollars of concessions we were already getting it under list price very touching story i would have called the buyer guys this is this is the most they can do they're losing so much money already they lost a hundred and forty thousand dollars let's please get them out of their misery oh, they can only come up with two thousand dollars that's all they can do buyer let's let's help them out is it sound ridiculous because it, it is What's the only thing that matters in this line? So that's the only thing that matters in the whole line. If we're negotiating back and forth and they come back, I can come up with 2K. That's it. All that matters. We're not going to let anything else affect us. I am not responsible for their terrible fine marketing decisions. I'm not responsible for their terrible business practices. I'm not, you're not going to put that weight on my shoulder. So after talking to my clients, you know, with receiving a huge amount of concessions already, rate buy downs and everything, we're like, okay. Let's just, uh, let's just do 3000. We'll be good. We'll be good with 3000. So I, I got that. So I think we could squeeze more out of them. So I was like, I'm going to try 4k. I responded back. Uh, let me see if I can just read the response. Yeah. That certainly sounds like a tough situation for you. We would love to help you get this half house off your books. Fortunately, $2,000 doesn't fit with our goals. After talking to our clients, they may be able to make $4,000 work. Let's get this going so we can focus on closing. They agree to 4,000. Um, mistake you can make is to let the 95 percent of the paragraph influence your decision only focus on that one line that matters you may think you're being a complete butthole but every time i get a client and they're just riding my booty i respect that it annoys me sometimes but i respect that because i was like these guys know what they're doing these guys are going to get a great deal and when they make my life a living heck then that means they're challenging me and they're pushing me and these guys are going to get a better deal than most. So that's all the time we have. I know we talked more about the financial 
uh, part of it, or sorry, the mental part of it and the mindset. I've made a lot of videos about like identifying opportunities and real estate stuff. So you, you know, feel free to watch those. I might find one and, and put it here. But either way, uh, this is part of my home buyer tip series. If you want to find the next video of my home buyer tip series, it's the closing costs. And, and I, what I did is I got two or three closing cost sheets and I, well, I think only two, and I went down line by line of what each closing costs are. Now, it's a lot more detailed, but once again, it's part of my home, home buyer tip series. So if you watch that one, then that video will tell you the next video to watch and that video will tell you the next video to watch. So at least you can start filling it up. So start watching it, hit it safe for later, do what you gotta do, um, check it out. Appreciate you guys' time. If you're still watching, thank you. Thank you guys, see you on the Discord, see you on the live streams, appreciate you. Have a good one.